Hello guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a 100 watt HF amplifier called the Neptune 100 and it's made by a Ukrainian company called 60dBm. Now this amplifier is currently retailing at around $399 plus shipping and they do ship worldwide. Now here in the UK, I did have to pay some customs duty. However, this can actually be claimed back through HMRC. Well, for those of you that are in the UK, that is. Also, if you only want 50 watts, then 60 dBm do make and sell a 50 watt version of this amplifier for $285. Nominal power supply is 13.5 volts, but your Shack 13.8 volt power supply should be just fine. Now that's as long as it's capable of delivering 15 amps. It supports all of the main hand bands from 160 meters, which is 1.8 megahertz, right up to the six meter band at 50 megahertz. RF input power can range from 1.5 watts to three watts with an absolute maximum of five watts. Now the output power should be in the region of 100 to 125 watts. The Neptune 100 does support auto band switching via RF sensing. However, you can turn this off and put it into manual band selection mode by holding the button on the front panel while applying power. Now the single push button also acts as a power button, a long press to turn it off and then a long press to turn it on. Now when powered on, the green left side LED will illuminate and the red LED that's under that TX writing will illuminate when the amplifier is in transmit mode. Now from the middle to the right side, you'll also notice a row of green LEDs and only one of these will be lit at any given time. And these indicate which band is currently selected. Now on the rear, you'll find the power cable, which is not terminated. And to be honest, I find it a little short. However, I was surprised also to find there was no inline fuses, but I guess adding them actually isn't too difficult if you need to. Also on the rear, there's two BNC sockets, one for RF input, which connects to your radio, and then there's an RF output, which would go to your antenna or even off to an antenna tuning unit. The middle RCA phono style socket is used for controlling the PTT of the amplifier. There's no RF sense in when it comes to that, but simply ground that center pin to put the Neptune 100 into transmit mode. Now I'll be testing this amplifier with a Hermes Light 2 SDR radio, and that naturally has an RCA style socket on the rear, which will plug straight into the Neptune 100 PTT port without the need for any relays. You would have also noticed that there's no cooling fans, but the finned heatsink covers the entire top section of the amplifier, which obviously keeps it warm once those transistors start to get warmer. As mentioned a moment ago, the fixed power cable is rather short, but not really a problem for me as I'll be attaching some Anderson power pole connectors so it's easily connectable to my Home Shack power supply or one of my bio -Eno lithium batteries if I wanted to take this amplifier portable. The setup that we have here is the Neptune 100 on the left and on the right I have my Norden Lab calibrated power meter which is made by Nissi. The power meter output is connected to a homemade 250 watt HF dummy load. Now the amplifier input connection, which is on the rear, now that's connected to the output of my Hermes Light 2 SDR transceiver. And what we'll do here is first measure the direct power output from the Hermes Light 2, and then we'll measure the output power with the Neptune 100 RF amplifier turned on. That way we get to see what's going in and what's coming out when the amp's on. So first up, let's test the power output on the Hermes Light on the 160 meter band. Now for this, I'm gonna be using the tune function on the Thetis software, which outputs a tone. I also have the tune power level set to maximum. Now the Hermes appears to be outputting just a smidge over five watts on 160 meters. And with the amplifier turned on, we see a smidge under 100 watts. I'll now turn the amp off by holding in the power button. And now we'll change the band on Thetis to 80 meters and then press the tune button again. A smidge under five watts is also shown. And with the amp turned on, we see an output of around 91 watts on the 80 meter band with that Neptune 100. 40 meters, we see an output of around 4.5 watts from the Hermes SDR. And with the amplifier turned on, we see around 93 watts. 
Now up on 20 meters, the Hermes appears to output around 4.9 watts, and with the amp turned on, we see an output of around 88 watts. On the 17 meter band, the Hermes outputs around 4.9 watts, and then with the amp on, we see an output of around 76 watts. On the 15 meter band, we see an output of around 83 watts with the amplifier turned on, and on 12 meter, we see an output of around 3.4 watts just from the Hermes, and with the amp on, we see around 54 watts from the amplifier. Now up on the 10 meter band, it had the same input power, but we see around 60 watts output. Now I didn't test the six meter band because the Hermes light doesn't support 50 megahertz. I guess I could have used one of my other transceivers that supports six meters, but if you guys are interested in that, then let me know and I'll make up a PTT cable and then I'll test it with another radio with a five watt input. Now we'll show you what this amplifier looks like inside in a moment, but first let's make a couple of contacts. The first contact I had was on 20 meters and then I had a contact on 40 meters. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Queen Whiskey, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Five and nine into the UK. Name here is Matt. Mike Alpha Tango QSL. Okay, QSL, Matt. The name here is the same, Matt. Mike Alpha Tango QTH in the northwest Italy. Five and nine, real report, okay? Yeah, thank you very much. 73, have a good day. Thank you, sir. 73. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Yes, uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, M0DQW. You're 5959. The name here is Matt. Mike Alpha Tango, QSL. QSL, Matt, great to hear you. Lovely signal. Uh, you're 59 into B Dale in North Yorkshire, activating for bunkers and parks. The bunker is Bravo Golf 0954, and the park is Golf Bravo 2037. And the World Tour Britain Square, Sugar Echo 28. Lovely 5 and 9 both ways, QSL. Yeah, QSL, thank you very much for the contact and uh, 73s. So hope you get many more. Cheers, bye bye. Cheers, Matt, 73 QRZ. Now, to gain access to the amp's internals, you have to remove eight screws, and then the bottom casing of the amp will be able to be removed. And here is what the internals look like. On the right side, we can see an array of relays which will switch in and out various filters depending on which band has been selected. Now, in the center, we can see the RF transistors of which there appears to be two of them. Now these are labeled as Mitsubishi RD100 HHF1C MOSFET transistors. And what's interesting is that these to be rated at 100 watts each, up to 30 megahertz. Now before ordering this amp, I had read some reviews of other users having issues with the auto band switching and the PTT line when using SSB. However, with this latest version, it appears those issues have now been rectified as I didn't experience any issues while using this amp on multiple bands and with multiple QSOs. Now, I did only test with one radio and that was the Hermes Light SDR, but I would expect it would work the same with other radios. Now, that's as long as the radio has a PTT output, which is grounded when transmitting. Now, personally, I would have preferred to see SO239 sockets on the rear, especially for home use, but I guess the BNC sockets have been used with portable operation more in mind. The Neptune 100 only weighs around 1.6 kilogram, and while you might not want to strap it to your back while hiking up a hill, it's still a usable size and weight for more portable locations. Now, when we'd done the power test, we did see the power drop as we went to the higher bands but I believe that's obviously related to the input power also dropping. Now, if we had a constant five watt input across all the bands, then the power test probably would have been more useful. But I wanted to show you guys an amplifier that could work well with the Hermes Light 2 STR transceiver. Now, there is no inbuilt ATU like we see on the Zygu 125B amplifier, but you'll be glad of using this amp with resonant antennas rather than wasting power dissipated through an ATU anyhow. And anyway guys, if you have one of these amps, let us know down in the comments below. Let me know how you get on with it. Maybe you've got an older version which may have had an issue. I'll leave a link to the website down in the description below. Until the next video, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.